Hi, I'm Cody at Lydia, um, aka Kid Gloves, and this is The Music Enthusiast. Hi, I'm Sarah from The Music Enthusiast, and today I'm here with Kid Gloves. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. It's so great to be talking to you. It's a sunny day, and now I get to talk to you, so it just makes my day so much better. Uh, that's so sweet. Me too. I feel the same. It's beautiful here. Where, where are you located? I'm in Montreal right now. What about you? Wow, nice. Oh, I'm in um, Pasadena, California, so just outside LA. Oh my god, wow. Yeah, it's really nice here. It's been a beautiful day. Um, it's been a beautiful, like, last few weeks. Um, and then it gets really hot out here in the summer, so I'm just trying to cherish it as long as we have it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel the same way. It's not as nice over here, but it's been nice a few days now, and it's gonna rain soon, so. The rain's always around the corner. I, I grew up in um, in Ohio, so uh, I'm used to like some pretty gnarly seasons. We have seasons out here. I think a lot of people think it's just like always 75 and sunny in California, but it's that's not the, that's not the case. Like we have to deal with we have to deal with some some bad weather too. We had last summer we had a bunch of fires and stuff. It was really bad. You couldn't even leave the uh, like the air quality was so bad you couldn't even leave your apartment. Um, and that was last summer. So. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Uh, on to the music. Yeah, let's talk music. <laughs> uh, why Kid Gloves? What, how did you come up with that name? Um, Kid Gloves is actually a sort of like tribute to my childhood favorite band Rush, which <laughs> it, since you're from Canada, I'm sure you're familiar mm -hmm. with the band. But those of you who aren't familiar with Rush, they're pretty much the greatest band next to the Beatles, that have, in my opinion. <laughs> Um, but it was growing up, it was always Rush and the Beatles and sort of back and forth of being like super into um, either band or both. Um, and then I sort of carried into my music and I kind of heard some of the influences, especially the Beatles. But um, more recently, um, I've been listening to more like Rush that I wasn't really into, like I wasn't really into the 80s era of Rush until lately. And I've been listening to a lot of that and like some of the synth stuff that Getty's doing has been a pretty big influence on the music. So it wasn't really like directly related to how my music sounded when I first started doing the project. Mm -hmm. It was just something to kind of like tip the hat to my, my heroes. But um, as I got into it and started writing more songs, I definitely heard a little bit of similarities like subconsciously. And Amazing. That is so cool. Uh, were there other names along the way or what were you like? Like, kid gloves is what I want to be, the thing. Yeah, it was like, I, I can't even remember how, I think I just woke up one day and was like, that's it, you know? It was like, sort of in that, like, what's the, I don't even, I'm not even sure of the phrase, but it's the phrase where you're like half asleep, half awake. Oh you're my sort God. Of in that middle phase. There's a, there's a term for that, I think. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I, I can't think of it right now. Yeah, it's like the most magical time uh, of the day for, you know, for creative people. I'm sure you can relate, Sarah. So it's like this, you have this moment where your, your dreams are still so close to like your reality. Mm -hmm. And that moment where it kind of feels like it's like it actually happened to you. And you're reflecting on it. And um, you're, you're, it's sort of like a digital copy of that dream where you can kind of pick some things out of it. And you can kind of remember some parts. And for whatever reason, kid gloves popped in my head and then I started just throwing it out there like on demos from sending friends and they were like I love that name you know and I just got that great feedback and my my girlfriend um was a big fan of it so we just we rolled with it you know amazing well it is a great name it's really catchy I mean I haven't forgotten the name so I mean that's a good sign right yeah that is it's good to hear <laughs> thanks no problem your bass guitar has apparently been in your hands since the fifth grade so was music always a thing you wanted to do with your life? Yeah, I, my dad's a, a musician. My grandpa was a big influence on me. He was a musician. I, I had a phase where I was really into sports at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then as I got older, it kind of became this thing where it was like either or. You don't, you don't have time to do both. Because so I was so involved with like all the extracurricular musical things. And I think that kind of annoyed my, my baseball, co baseball coach a bit you know, because the responsibility gets like really crazy when you get older, like they want you to, to be 100% in. And uh, I just, yeah, I picked music. It was easy for me because my brother, my little brother was really serious in baseball as well. So it was kind of like, that was his thing. 
music was my thing. And when you're sharing a room with a sibling, it's kind of important to have your own like <laughs> things your that, thing. like, yeah, your own like thing you can ex escape to. But music was that, it was a refuge for me. Um, and it was a connection to my dad. And then my grandpa passed when I was in high school and um, he passed away sort of at that turning point where I was like, I'm gonna really, you know, go for this thing. I'm gonna really go for it because it um, was something that I know would make him really proud and sort of always, he's kind of always in my, in my mind when I'm creating music. I think he's guiding me a bit. So yeah, musical family for sure. Musical upbringing. Um, my dad has great taste in music. So he was always playing really amazing songs um, around the house and, and in the car. And um, his band was awesome. I, they would rehearse when we were kids. I remember like dancing in the living room because they were like rehearsing in the basement below us. That's and so you cool. feel the vibrations of the drums and the, and the gear and they were, they were a rock band, so they were heavier. <laughs> And they were so good. And I think, yeah, those are some of the best memories like at the house when being a kid, like dancing to his band and stuff like that, so. Were you self-taught or did like someone in your family teach you how to play the instruments? Yeah, well, my dad sort of, um, I'm trying to think. I don't think that he actually gave me lessons per se. I, I, um, I was self-taught on like the instruments that he just had, like he would have a guitar like laying on the couch cause he would pick up the guitar while he was watching television and an old around. So when he wasn't around, I would like grab the guitar and like, and like, you know, it's my turn, you know, and like start playing. And, um, and then there's a piano at my grandparents' house and I kind of learned. And then the fourth grade, uh, the orchestra program did a visit to our class mm -hmm. and the um, instructor was a bass player, which I didn't know. He never told us like what instrument he played because he didn't want people to think he was playing favorites to the instrument that he played. So he um, showed us a demonstration on the upright bass. And I was like, that's a, you know, oh, like you just like, it was like the, you know, the school of rock, you know, where he's like, cello, you got a bass, yeah. you know, and he like, I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. I just looked, had this presence to it. And it, I already kind of knew the bass. My dad was a bass player. Um, so I started playing in the school orchestra. And then I was in the Columbus Youth Symphony Orchestra and like all the extracurriculars through school. Um, uh, first chair in the high school orchestra. Um, so my studying was through the orchestral program, the school program. Um, but nothing like private. I didn't do any private lessons. Okay, that is so cool. I love that. Yeah. Now on to the music. Just Friends is your first release of the year. So how are you feeling about that? How is the response? Been? Uh, good. Yeah, really good. It's. I think it's my. Um, not to correct you. I think it's my second. I think. Ooh, sorry. Had, um, no, no, no. Well, it's it's crazy. It's already April. So I, you yeah. know, uh, but this is the Just Friends is my fourth release. But um, yeah. I've released satellite in 2020 um and featured my friend emily brimlow on that and then um and then i released two more songs in highway and then islander and now, now we're on just friends and uh yeah it's, i've been getting uh great great feedback and seems to be resonating with people i think it's a relatable story and it's pretty transparent so <laughs> uh i yeah it's been it's been crazy i mean you you, uh, it, it was kind of a, a venture for me, like doing the sort of the, the heavier guitar a, a bit, like the distorted guitar um, was a little different than like some of the more like atmospheric, like open sounding stuff that I was doing in my first three songs. But it in that sort of genre of like the early 2000s, like the Strokes and Weezer and bands like that were also a massive influence on me. So it was, it felt natural, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, do you feel as if your music has evolved between just friends and satellite? Yeah, I do. That's a that, that's a really good question. Like, because my partner and I, my girlfriend and I, we um, often talk about you know, we're always trying to think big picture and building something, and not and sort of trying to each time the music. And she has a big influence on me with with how it resonates with her. You know, if it could pass like the and test, that's like a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. But it's just nice to have that outside perspective. And she's very honest with me about it. If, if it's like something she'll listen to more than once. Um, so I'll demo out like, I think I've got like 50 or so songs that, you know, 40 or 50 songs that I've like 
that I've never finished, but have gotten like 70 or 80%. And then for whatever reason, didn't feel inspired to finish them. Mm -hmm. And Just Friends happened really fast. And I wasn't even really like sure about it. And I was just like laying in bed and I played it on my phone, like casually, like on the phone speaker. And 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 was like, what is that? You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So I was like, oh, I should probably finish that song. Yeah. And it, so it has. Yeah, I, I was nervous about it. I didn't think that she especially wasn't. I didn't think that she was going to like it because the aesthetic was different um, because it wasn't acoustic guitar. I didn't use any vocoder on this one. So like there's a DNA that I was trying to keep really specific to when I was when I started um, the project, which was like acoustic um, vocoder, really relaxed vocals and that kind of feel, you know, like a modern like, you know, maybe the DNA closer to like a Jack Johnson type vibe, but then with like more uh, modern production. Um, that was kind of the thing. And then Just Friends like came out and and uh, and it felt different, but then I, f I felt like I could achieve that. It could work if I was able to deliver the vocal the same sort of way. So I just used the vocal as an opportunity to keep it really relaxed. I love that. It's, I mean, being an artist is all about experimenting and I'm glad that you experimented in the way that you just described. It's so great. Thank you. Yeah, you gotta take, I think it's important to take risks, but um, with that comes like a need to be sincere still. Like you can, I, I, it's easy for me to wanna do everything all the time in a song, mm -hmm. but sort of be more like architectural about it um because i can I, i'll hear harmony and i'll want to add vocal layers and kind of go crazy then all of a sudden i've got like a hundred tracks on my ableton session and it crashes like every two minutes so that's usually a, that's usually the sign that i need to like slow down the computer like doesn't want to keep up with it thank god for that you know thank god for the computer kind of telling me like hey man like yeah take it easy <laughs> <laughs> keep it simple amazing i love that um, in your Spotify bio, it says that the debut album is cooking. So what can you tell us about that? I'm super excited. Yeah, I've, I've uh, just had a big conversation with my, my partner and my team, my, my label. And we just kind of talked about like the next step being um, sort of deviating from that single structure, like three minutes of music every four to six weeks, like just give me your, you know, which is kind of the drill nowadays yeah. for most artists and independent artists. And then really taking the time, moving into this next chapter, into this new year in post quarantine life mm -hmm. out here where I'm going to be able to go out to concerts here pretty soon, I, I hope, and um, sort of get back into, into that, like play, maybe playing some live shows and stuff like that, which I haven't been able to do with this project yet, which I'm really excited about. Um, so as that starts to happen, I think it'll be perfect timing because then I can sort of test out the material at shows and see what works and, and just take my time with an album and try to tell a, a more broad, a broader story. Just keep demoing until something sticks. Kind of the same structure I've been doing. This is like nocturnal, like I'll stay up all night and work on a song and then, um, and then like listen to it on fresh ears the next morning and see if it still feels right. Um, and do that with with an album in mind is really important, I think, to give yourself that goal and say, hey, like this is this is going to be bigger than just one song. Um, you know, let's let's conceptualize what we want this to mean. And I'm stoked. Definitely yeah, so that's, it's really still in the baby phases because we just came out of these releases, which were really fast and close together. Mm -hmm. And now I can kind of step back and, and look at it, look at it um, as as a bigger picture, which I'm really excited for. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, speaking of shows, what was the last show you went to? And do you, you obviously miss shows, right? I do. <laughs> of course. Yeah, I feel I feel yeah, I, I I'm trying to think I played a show with Emily, uh, Emily Brimlow. I played a show in her band. I was the MD for her band. I played bass and we played a show at a venue in Santa Monica Bar Lubitsch. And uh, it was for like this, um, it was this independent music showcase kind of thing. It was really cool. But besides that, I think the last show that I actually attended to just as a, as a, as a fan was Theo Katzman at, um, at the Fonda, Theo Katzman at the Fonda. 
so fun. I, it was, we had such a, it was for my birthday. It was my, so it was my, my birthday and it was my gift from my, my girlfriend. She, she took me to Theo Katzman and uh, just some of the greatest, like world-class musicians. It was just super fun. I was uh, a little too close to the front of the stage where because I like I'm friends with uh I'm friends with my 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 buddy Jordan plays drums in his band and he was on the gig and uh and he said he, he saw me out there and I was super embarrassed because I was like way closer than I should have been you know what I mean but I like really wanted to be close to the stage I don't yeah know. <laughs> I get that like as a concert goer and as a tall person Sometimes I'm like in the front row with like so many short people and I feel like I need to like crouch, crouch down a bit. How tall are you? I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, That's tall, yeah. <laughs> so you, so you're, you're usually the tall friend, right? So yeah. you're, when you go to a concert with friends, you have to like make sure nobody's standing behind you that isn't too small. Is that, is that the drill? Like you're well, like- I mean- I like to have fun, so like it doesn't really matter, but I keep an eye out for them, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's nice of you. That's Thank really, is really, um, really generous of you to make sure that everyone around you can see. <laughs> but I wouldn't feel that bad because I'm, I'm six foot, so <laughs> I, I have the same feeling, but I was so captivated by their musicianship and their, and their focus and their live show. I was in it and I didn't at one point I didn't care it was after the show where Jordan Dex was like hey I saw you out there and I was like oh I, w I wish you didn't see me out there like wear a baseball hat real low next time <laughs> oh my God. that actually reminds me of a time I saw a local singer who's my friend actually in Montreal um he made everyone sit down for a song and it was like so cozy and like it was so different I, and I loved it and it was such a good idea. <laughs> you guys have, um, that is a good idea. Do you guys have so far sounds in Canada? No, I would, uh, I think maybe in Toronto. I don't think I've ever heard of them in Montreal though, but it would be so dope. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the MO with them, right? Like everyone sits on the floor, they put out carpets and, and it's a like super intimate concert and all of the people that work the event are volunteers and like in the, in the music industry, people, people like you and, you know, people like you, like, like I just, you know, love you know loves music and and uh people are volunteering so people are your age that are running this show and it's just really it's really fun uh i'm looking forward to doing a so far sound show and uh if i ever do one in toronto you, you should you should make the trip It'd be fun I, I will drive six hours i will be there <laughs> oh well that's i don't know i don't know if it's worth six hours in the car actually you know what it'll okay. be worth six hours in the car <laughs> i mean you play the show toronto i love toronto so i mean why not? Okay. Yeah, definitely make the trip. Maybe um maybe I can play a show. Maybe I can book a show closer to you. Maybe actually in Montreal. Okay. I'll, I'll keep you posted for sure. Or Ottawa's like two hours away, you know? It's not that bad. From California? Montreal. Montreal. Is it really? California, I have no idea. <laughs> but Montreal. No. Yeah. What's two hours away from you? Uh like Ottawa, that region. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Emily's from, um, Emily Brimlow's from Canada. I think she's from Quebec. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Montreal's in Quebec. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. She's a Canadian. She, she just moved here, um, to California. When I met her, she had just moved to California from Canada. It's so dope. Yeah. You should look her up. You should check her music out. She's, she's amazing. I will. I will right after this. I promise. This is a fun question. If you could pick one of your songs to go in one movie, which song would it be and which movie would it be? Oh, that is a great question. Thank you. <laughs> um, wow. I have this, I have a new song that, that I, I'm kind of on the fence of releasing before the album is like the fifth. Um, Cause I'm, I have a, another song with this sort of first phase and that one sounds like it could be in like maybe a Wes Anderson film or something like that it would be really cool. I'm a big Scorsese fan. So I think it'd be really cool to hear Highway and oh, a movie that's already out. Is that, is that what you're asking about? If you want, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, wow, that's such, a hard that's such a hard question. So if I could like go back in time and be someone that they wanted. Yeah, that would be so for, cool. That would be so cool. Wow. What a difficult question, but, but still very fun. Have you ever seen um, the Clint Eastwood film, Grand Torino? Have you seen that? No, 
actually. I've heard of it though. You should watch it. It's so good. He directed and I think he wrote it as well. I know he directed it and he stars in it. He's, he plays the old like cynical conservative blue collar like war veteran neighbor to this Asian family and he builds a relationship with the son who's getting bullied by this gang and sort of Clint Eastwood's character kind of takes him under his wing and um, the film is named after the car that Clint Eastwood has he has his classic Gran Torino oh. and uh, it would be really cool to hear Highway in Gran Tor Torino because it's a song about like driving in the night and yeah oh. I'm gonna stick with that. A great choice. <laughs> Thanks. And last question. Do you have any favorite artists at the moment? Because we're always down to discover new artists, artists you love. I have been listening to so much classical music lately that it's hard to think about a, a current I wanna give someone a shout out that like needs it more than Weezer or Mozart or <laughs> Beethoven. Um <laughs> uh Del Watergap's awesome. Yeah. He's pretty cool. I, I mean, Phoebe Bridgers is, is great. Uh, Maddie Cunningham uh, has got some good stuff. Uh, her cover of um, In My Life, the Beatles tune. Uh, I've been listening to that a lot. Uh, I'd say Maddie Cunningham. I think she's amazing. I think she's a star. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. It was so great talking to you. Sarah, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this has been really fun.